Good morning, everyone. Uh, my, my name is Jess Sugars from Olympus UK, and today I'm going to walk you through best practice for high resolution photography on the OMD. Uh, this is one of my favorite features on the EM1 Mark III, and this feature goes back a number of years. It's been on our EM5 Mark IIs and progressively on the mid range and up to the top end for a number of years. And this technology has gradually improved and improved and improved. And we've now reached a point with the EM1 Mark III and the X that you can actually do high resolution mode handheld. Uh, so today I'm going to walk you through the joys of that feature. Uh, so today is going to be divided into three sections. I'm going to do a bit of PowerPoint showing you best practice, what does and doesn't work, uh, a few lens examples, etc. And then I'm going to show you how to set it up onto the camera. And then we can have a little Q&A. And, uh, and then if everyone's happy, we'll all go home and hopefully be a little bit wiser from it. Okay, brilliant. So uh, let's not delay and I will share my screen and begin the presentation. So give me one moment. Sometimes this bit can be a little bit slow to kick in. Let's see how it does today. Ah, brilliant. Excellent. I'm just going to hide me away. So give me one moment. That's a bit distracting. There we go. So I'm gone for now. Okay. So high res workshop. So if we were obviously before COVID-19, uh, you'd probably have visited me in uh, park cameras or WEX or one of my lovely LCE branches. And I'd have set up this lovely little table of bits for you guys to try out. And normally it would be an open kind of forum where you guys could wander in, uh, try a bit of macro, try a bit of stacking and try a bit of high resolution as well. Uh, but yep, sadly, uh, due to the way things are currently, um, we can't do that. So Olympus, we're doing the best we can to obviously give you guys as much support online as possible. Okay. So high resolution mode on the EM1 Mark III. So if you have an EM1 Mark II or an EM1 or um, a 5 Mark II, oh, I've just got one more person to admit, one second. Hello, Carol, welcome, you haven't missed much. Uh, you had the EM5 Mark II. So all of these cameras have had high res built into them. But yes, as I said, the Mark III is the first to be able to do it handheld. Um, so with the high resolution mode at 50 megapixels, um, it takes up to 16 images and compresses them all together, giving you this really incredible high resolution image. Um, what's great about this, it means that you can obviously blow something up the size of a house or you can really crop into your image. So there's some really nice options there. Uh, you can also do an 80 megapixel RAW or JPEG, and this will be done on a tripod, and this will take up to eight shots. And to give you a kind of um, dots per inch uh, comparison, uh, you're looking pretty much at about a third increase on the resolution. Not only is it gonna give you more resolution to crop, but it also brings out the details more, <coughs> it deals with the noise very nicely as well. Um, so yeah, you're looking at sort of 8,000-ish dots across the bottom and 6,000-ish across the side compared to your normal sort of, uh, sort of four by five. So it's a really nice extra level of detail you're getting. And, uh, and you can crop quite safely down to sort of, you know, two. 2700 to sort of 2000 ish 1800 so you're really able to delve right in and again i'm going to give you some nice examples today so obviously you can do it handheld with this one uh, also compared to the mark ii it isn't capped at 1600 now so it means you've got the ability to go a bit higher on the isos if you need to uh, and it will shoot from 8000th of a second uh, up to 60 seconds so there's quite a few nice options that you can play around with, including kind of doing some nice slow exposures, get a bit creative and a bit arty with it, maybe even make it a black and white feature. And then it, again, you've got something a little bit more avant-garde to play around with once you've finished. Okay, so what is it used for? So I've already mentioned this. So it's extra large prints, it's cropping, it's landscape, um, and urban landscape. That's the one I like using it for. Uh, but it's also really good for sort of fine art reproduction. So if you've uh, made something that you want to put on Etsy, um, again, this high resolution mode will give you the ability to crop right in and show some really fine details. Uh, it works really nice for still life. Uh, macro is another great example. I'm going to do a, a sort of semi macro demonstration at the end of this so you guys can sort of see it in action. Uh, but it means that you can crop, uh, you can shoot obviously a bug on a leaf and then you can crop right in on the face. And once you've cropped into that face, you're going to get a decent resolution and a printable image. It also works pretty well for Astral. It's something I haven't tried with Astral yet, but I'm certainly looking forward to doing it at some points. 
So high res demo. So the one I've got behind you isn't a million miles different from what you're looking at here. This is one that I um, used in a video uh, for Olympus not that long ago. So again, I'm going to work with the same sort of setup. I've tweaked it a little bit just to keep myself interested, but we are going to deal with that. And again, it's the ability to be able to jump right in like that is what we're after today. So I have run some tests for you on different lenses, different lenses that you probably have as an EM1 Mark III or Mark II user or an EM5 user. Again, it's being able to use this glass and how effective it will be um, when used. So first one I tried up, which is probably most people's favorite, is that all round superb lens, the 12 to 100, which is a 24 to 200. I've shot this at f8 and I've done it at 200th of a second ISO 400 and I've tried to keep this fairly um, systematic throughout the test so it's fairly fair okay so let's have a look I headed down into Chichester um, where I live and headed into Priory Park because there's a nice view there of the cathedral so this is from uh, the city wall looking into uh, south or sort of southwestish into town. So this is at 12 mil. This is your 24 setting. I shoot a lot at 24, I find. When I look at the data on most of my images, most of them seem to be around this uh, 12, 24 frame rate. And the reason I like it, I suspect, is it gives a bit of drama, but it's not overly distorted. It's not going down that super wide angle. It's still keeping my verticals looking fairly healthy. Uh, things are starting to lean back a bit, but at 24, I always find that my images look fairly naturalistic, but with a little bit of style going on as well. So this is the full image, and let's do a little crop in and see what we got. Okay, so what have we got there? We've got a lovely sharp spire. We've got a really uh, good looking tree, so we'd be able to crop nicely. But what have we got in the foreground? Yes, we've got a movement problem. So again, this technology is fantastic, but it is a bit hit and miss when you've got people, uh, if they're normally sort of, you know, stood around, it's absolutely fine. But if you catch them at the wrong moment, you do end up with a bit of motion blur. So that's why I've kept this example in for you to be able to see. Uh, as you can see in that picture, there's plenty of people that aren't, but it just happened to be that I suspect these guys were just moving at a decent pace through the middle but we have a really decent crop and a decent amount of resolution to play with, especially at f8. Okay, so then I've moved the lens up to the 100mm end. So as you can see, my crop really is uh, somewhere around 80mm, I suspect. Um, but let's go to the full 100 And then again, when I crop in, I've got great resolution here. Um, I really was blown away actually, particularly at the far end, because normally with zoom lenses at the far end, there's always some sort of softness. But I think at F8, this has done an absolutely cracking job, especially against the light as well. Okay, so a lot of you guys are probably landscape photographers. You're thinking high res. Uh, I see very nice harbors and mud flats and all sorts of uh, uh, nice landscape options available. And again, with or without a tripod. So great to be able to wander around without the tripod. So the next one is R7 to 14, which is our lovely wide angle. Again, F8 and again, 400 ISO. So as you can see, that cathedral is certainly seems a lot further away. And this is right at that 14 mil end or 7 mil on our micro four third chips. And as you can see, that tree on the right is starting to look a bit distorted, but often with nature and these super wide angles, it works really nicely. I find it doesn't work so well um, sometimes architecturally because I feel like my, uh, my leading lines are warping too much. But with nature, you can certainly get away with these super wide shots. And uh, I mean, those trees look miles away, but really they're, they're, they're really not very far. Right. And this lens I was suspecting would probably look a little bit weak in the middle due to just how much width it's doing. But let's have a little jump in and have a look. Wow. So that's quite a significant crop. But for me, that's pretty good resolution. Again, we've got a bit of movement in people, which isn't too much of a distraction. Often my landscapes end up black and white anyway, so you wouldn't really notice them quite as much. Quite like a bit of motion blur um, in people, especially with architecture and things like that. It gives a sense of kind of uh, life going on around a structure. But as you can see, the resolutions hold up pretty well. And now at the 14 end, so right at the far end of the zoom, and again, I'm going to crop right in. Uh, for me, again, the resolution was pretty good. When you zoom right into, you know, as close as you can go, you can definitely see a bit of fringing and stuff like that going on 
but it is so minor considering how much we've cropped in. Um, so again, really blown away again by the way the, uh, the wide angle behaved, far better than I actually thought it would be. Right, and now I've gone to the other end of the market, um, and I'm generally this end of the market. I'm a prime lens guy. I let my legs do the uh, the zoom, as they say, and I try and plan ahead when I'm shooting. I love the one twos, but I also use the one eights a lot for their size and weight. So this 45 one two I've been using a lot over lockdown. Uh, it's just a cracking lens. It's probably the best lens we make. Uh, the image quality is absolutely superb from it. Okay, so this is the 45 mil one two at f8 and ISO 400, so let's have a look. So we've got a nice crop in straight away. And for me, you can see straight away that extra level of detail and clarity within the image. And now let's zoom right in. And again, when I crop right in, it is really, really strong. It is better than the, the zoom lenses, but to be honest with you, I was amazed at the, the lack of difference, actually. I found the, uh, the 12 to 100 particularly uh, tasty um, and not a, a million miles away from the uh, sort of uh, prime lens quality, but there is definitely a resolution difference. And I suspect if we did a print, we'd probably notice it quite a bit. Right, then I decided to do the 45 at one two, because obviously this is where you get that lovely uh, falling off uh, compression, uh, but also at one two, it is going to be a bit softer. But how much softer? Let's have a look. It's going to be doffed. It's going to be doffed, possibly. Okay, so let's have a look. Wow, for me, it looks pretty good, especially in the center. You can see it falling off a bit around the edges. Uh, some of the leaves on the, the very far tree <laughs> are losing a little bit, but you're really having to be very pernickety. Certainly if I was using a 1.2, like back in the day on a full frame camera, its image quality, except for in the middle, would be fairly loose. Um, so again, it's a real advantage of our Micro Four Third chip is the, uh, the quality of the resolution from middle to edge is uh, very, very, uh, um, even which is lovely and even with a bit of a crop you can definitely see that the resolution holds up I can definitely see though in the uh, clock tower to the right of the cathedral I'm starting to lose it definitely some fringing in that far post but at 1.2 I definitely was pushing it Okay, so this one here is now uh, a slightly slower exposure. So this is where I have decided to go into the cathedral and uh, try some more kind of traditional uses for high res. So things like stained glass windows. Uh, so this one again, 7 to 14, F4, <coughs> 15th of a second handheld ISO 400. And again, 15th of a second is more than comfortable um, with the Olympus cameras. Sometimes I can go down to about two or even four seconds and it'll be pin sharp. Uh, they've just done some restoration actually on this window and all the walls so it's all looking very shiny and clean in uh, in Chichester Cathedral now they're actually just working on the roof currently um, so here's the full uh, resolution uh, sorry the full image and let's do a crop in all the way up to Jesus over here and again phenomenal amount of cropping but really really nice resolution <coughs> very very pleased with that one and as I was leaving the cathedral, we have some peregrine falcons. Uh, so on the left uh, is at 100 mil, and I could see him, just, well, I could hear him first because he was cheap in a way. And when I zoomed right in, you can see that it's not great resolution, but certainly for social media or something like that, it would be absolutely fine. Uh, I love a bit of moon photography. Having a 300 mil at home always makes it uh, a real treat to get that out and play with some uh, some moon photography or some astral photography. And this was the 300 mil uh, high res handheld using the MC20. So incredible <coughs> stabilization here. And again, I was really blown away by the image quality. I didn't crop in anymore because I'd already done my cropping with my times too. I felt like I was probably pushing it a bit too far, but again, totally printable at this sort of what 1200 millimeter end of the market and again like i said completely handheld okay so let's have a look at some camera settings i just need to plug unplug my hdmi from my uh, webcam and pop it into a camera so give me two seconds to switch that over okay if anyone has got any questions or comments now you're more than welcome to chime in while I'm doing uh, just swapping the cameras over okay uh, just plugging in now okay. 
just going to pop the camera on and switch the feeds. Stop sharing. There we go. Brilliant. Okay, and now let's bring up my camera. Okay, so how do I set this feature up? It's a pretty simple one, to be honest with you. Um, I've pressed OK on the Super Control Panel. Sorry, OK to bring up my Super Control Panel. I'm just going to run through some basics here. So your ISO is in the top corner. And this can be controlled using your front dial, or you can click OK to jump further in and adjust there. Uh, me personally, I do everything via the uh, Super Control Panel. You can go into the deep menu to do stuff, but this is by far the best place to do it. Um, again, white balance can be done completely auto. Uh, but if you go to the very end of the menu, uh, you can actually custom it. So I love doing this. I love playing around with the warmth. So I'm just going to push it up a little bit for our demonstration. And again, single AF, no face detection, centered metering, uh, predominantly because it's a little still life. So there's going to be some slightly hot spots on this. So I'll try and meter around those. And the next step is super easy. All I have to do is go to my drive menu here, scroll all the way along, right to the very end of the menu, past all the timers, and here it is. I then press info, and it then gives me the option to go between tripod and handheld, and that's it. I'm gonna pop it onto handheld, and we are now ready to go with a 50 megapixel file. I'm gonna do it at about 600 ISO, because I haven't had my breakfast, so I might be a bit shaky. So let's see how this looks. I've got a basic uh, one source lighting here, and I've got the daylight doing the counterbalance. So let's just swing round, and I'm gonna try and do this uh, from the screen. So give me one moment. Let's just uh, bring my camera around. Joy of Leeds. Okay, let's bring this in. So what I'm showing you today, this is my little still life setup. I'm using the 60mm macro, so I'm just gonna have to flip the lens back a little bit just for you guys to be able to see. So what I've set up is a little still lifey bit here, and all I've got is just one source lighting here, and then I've got daylight coming out the other side. Okay, so let's come in a little bit closer. There we go, lovely. So I'm just gonna grab hold of this. This is a little bit of jewelry that my mum left to me. Um, I think it was my grandmother's originally. It's some tiger claw, but it's got lovely details on it. So one, two, three, we'll press the button. And off we go. So currently it is just building the picture. So give me one second. This is where your UHS-2 memory cards really come into their own, uh, predominantly because they're quicker than everything else to uh, process it. So there we go, already done. That was pretty quick. So let's press the playback button. And there it is. Wonderful, and now let's have a little jump through. So I've jumped in a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. Pretty incredible, to be honest with you, how close you can get to these things. A Little bit of movement, possibly, from me there, I think. I'm gonna have another go, actually. I'm gonna choose something, I'm gonna choose some of the wood this time. So let's have another go. So give me one minute, I'm just recomposing. And I'm just gonna come in like this. And now I'm gonna flip my lens into its macro setting, which means I'm coming forward. And I'm gonna choose something a little bit closer. So let's just bring that in a little bit more. Give me one minute. Just a little bit of back button focus. And let's find a little, I don't know, let's use the, uh, the little bit of rock I've got here. There we go. And go one, two, three. Okay, we're building another picture. Okay, let's pop that one on. So this is some coral I found out in the Caribbean uh, many, many years ago when I worked on the cruise ships. Um, and let's have a little jump in. So, oh, that one looks quite interesting. So let's come down a bit. There we go. So as you can see, we can see all sorts of bits of grit right in the groove of the, uh, right in the groove, which is quite incredible, really. So if you could imagine on the head of an insect or something like that, the level of detail is absolutely mind blowing. And again, with things like street photography, et cetera, it can be achieved. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch my feed back to, back to my webcam. Give me one minute.
Okay, let's bring me back to life. There we go. Okay, so let me show you some examples in the real world. Is it focused? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So this is something that I shot uh, when the EM, EM, uh, the EM1 Mark III came out. So this is the full shot. This is from a car park in Brighton. I'll try and get it straight. There we go, roughly that. And uh, so, yeah, this was JPEG. This was pre-RAW converters before they were all out. And then this is the level of crop that I've been able to do. And again, I've retained the, uh, the print size. So let me just bring it in like that. And you can really see, again, uh, I think it's all about prints. It always will be about prints for me in photography. And you can see that the level of detail is really, really nice. So it works really well for all sorts of architectural stuff. Okay, brilliant. So let's open up to a few questions. Has anybody got any questions for me? Hi, Jez, it's Jane here. Hello, Jane. Hi. Um, can you use put an art filter on and then have ha uh, the high res function at the same time? That's a really good question. Let me find out. I've just realized my <laughs> webcam's gone off center. One second, I just need to sort this out. One moment, just bring it back around. Okay, is that a bit better? Yeah, that's better. Uh, thank you. Okay, yeah, let me just have a dig through and I will tell you. That's a great question. Yeah, I'm um, using an M1X. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> Sorry about that. So what you, I know, I know, that's sad, isn't it? Um, yeah, so if you press, if you're in high res mode and press OK, go to the top corner where it's got your normal vivid portrait, you can always go right and get into your art filters there. And sadly, they're all greyed out. You have got the use of colour creator, black and white, as you'd expect, natural, vivid and muted. So sadly, you can't. But what you could do is you can use the Olympus software afterwards to apply it. Um, or if you're doing your phone as well, like um, using the app, again, you can add those filters on as well. Mm. There is a way around that, certainly. Okay, thank you. Cool. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, yes, Jez, I've got the um, EM5 Mark III. Brilliant. And when I go to the drive mode uh, and choose high res, I don't get an option to choose handheld or um, tripod. Yeah, so on the mid-range and on the EM1 Mark II, it, was, it is all tripod based, so it'd be excellent quality, uh, but yeah, you're going to have to find somewhere, somewhere supporting it when it does it. I've tried it leaning on tables, it sort of works, you know, I've got a very steady hand, I thought I could be a tripod, I can't. Um, yeah, you're going to need a tripod for that one. Right. Okay, thank you. That's all right. Okay, brilliant. Right. Go on, yeah, go on. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, ne next question, anyone? Yes, I've got one. Uh, I've got a Mark II as well, and I've noticed if I go into, uh, if I go into high res, when it first sets up, it just flashes the symbol. It just flashes a single. The symbol. The symbol. Yeah, for the high res. Okay, so you're, go so you're going along your drive menu. Yeah. And you get to it and uh, you just click OK on it. Oh, and you mean in the toolbar on the side, it's flashing? Yes. Yes, that's what it does. Um, it's right. just telling you that you've got it in there. Because it's, it's a bit of an odd place for it, to be honest with you, right at the back there. And I suspect they've gone, probably people hit it by accident when they're doing timers. So I think they probably made it so it flashes so people know that they're in high res mode. Okay, fine, thank you. Pleasure. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to send you a copy of this video once I've downloaded it and, uh, and I'll send you a feedback form. Uh, but thank you for your time and your patience. And I look forward to seeing you guys at some point in the near future. Stay safe. And all of us at Olympus will wish you the utmost and we look forward to seeing you soon. If you'd like to do a one-to-one, -one, please jump onto the Olympus Image Space. You can book me, Dave, Lewis, or any of the guys, and we'd love to walk you through any of the features that you're not sure about. So see you soon, everyone. Thanks, Jess. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.